Do You Know Where Your Daughter Is? is a play about the relationship between a mother and a daughter and the devastating consequences of peer pressure. It's written by the award-winning comedian Angie Lamar, who joins me now from Edinburgh, where her play is showing at the festival, at the Gilded Balloon indeed, until the end of this month. Angie Lamar, a very good morning to you. Uh, let's good start, morning, if we can, about the, the genesis of, uh, of the idea for, the, for this play. Uh, you were hosting a, a radio phone-in show. Tell us what happened. That's right. Yes, I was on Choice FM radio station uh, about uh, three years ago, and a young girl called in, and she'd spoken to me about um, a situation that she found herself in, and she'd wanted to know, Angie, is this rape, is this an uncomfortable situation that she had been with her boyfriend, and he'd brought some boys into the room, and they had, you know, been a little bit, just had gone too far, and she wasn't quite sure that where the lines were. She called me and said, Angie, is this rape? And I remember thinking about it and going home and saying to myself, you know what, there is a mother out there who doesn't know her daughter's called me to question me about a situation that she'd been in. And then it made me feel like, well, does she know where her daughter is? And then I went away and wrote this play, Do You Know Where Your Daughter Is? Because I wanted to just say to mothers out there, fathers out there, mm -hmm. you know, uh, our children, our young girls are experiencing, situ are getting themselves in situations that they need us to kind of be watching and looking out for them and maybe they feel they can't come to us so that's what inspired the play i suppose there's an argument that runs like this angie that there are mm. there are people there are young people in britain today and your play shines a light into a dark corner of their lives who need yeah. more help who need to have uh, more conversations with their parents who need to have better relationships with their parents and on the other hand you've got lots of kids who you're not necessarily addressing who actually are cosseted, who are wrapped in cotton wool, and their parents, by and large, do know where they are. And that's the division, isn't it? Yeah, because, you know, you sometimes have kids who are very much, like you say, wrapped in cotton wool, and when they go out there into the real world, as we find in our play, that the preparation or the tools that they will need to kind of, like, survive, and I'm, we're not trying to make young people feel like, oh, my God, you've got this war zone to survive in. It's just there are a lot of things out there that we need to be aware of, and I think some of our parents, some of the parents' generation needs to look at the things that are happening today and not judge what's gone on in our lives when we, we were young and what we used to do. It's a very different time. So I think they need to be prepared for that without scaring them. Mm. You, you make the point in a, in a couple of articles I've read that, yes, we are addressing some of the problems, massive problems raised by gang culture for young men, but it doesn't necessarily apply at the same level of scrutiny to our young women. Yeah, because I feel that there was a lot of um, attention given to young boys and, you know, lots of situations where young boys are getting themselves and we talk about gun crime and knife crime and all those things are very important. But also as well, some of these young men are having relationships with our daughters and we need to be preparing our children, preparing our daughters and our boys for relationships that are respectful and have boundaries and we keep reminding them of this. And so that's why I wanted to concentrate on the girls and say, look, we need to get the self-esteem up. We need to let them know these things are out there, not to be scared and not to live in a fearful situation, but also to know how to protect yourself, how to know where the lines are and the boundaries that are set in place for yourself. It's wonderful you're putting on this play and dealing with some of these very sensitive issues uh, through uh, theatre, but I suppose some people will look at it and say, you know, it's fine putting it on to a show of uh, you know, middle-class art lovers in Edinburgh, but actually that's not what the target audience here ought to be. Well, this is the fourth year of Do You Know Where Your Daughter Is? You know, it's been running for a long time and we go to schools, we go to college, we have variations of the uh, play adapting it for young schools and, you know, bringing it up a little bit stronger for colleges. And in Edinburgh, it's actually quite strong, you know, very hard hitting. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know that the Edinburgh is an international audience, so we've had um, people from um, America saying they want to take the show over there. We have two producers now wanting for LA and Boston and also for um, an African audience and Caribbean audience, because I think this is a very much an international situation where young girls are being, you know, neglected. And I think it's important that we bring it to the theatre so that we get that bigger audience to bring it back to the national tour that we want to take it on and get into schools and colleges and have the discussion. Because what is wonderful is that as soon as we do the play, there are young girls that want to talk about some of the issues that were raised, and so we want to have workshops afterwards so we don't just leave them with oh, that's a great play, we've enjoyed it, and now we've left you with that. OK. Angela Marr, we wish you the very best with it, and thanks very much indeed for joining Thank us. You. Angela Marr there. Thank you.